go sharking. Let's try anyway. Right, we're on the beach. As you can see, this boat is absolutely ram packed with gear. It's going to be a lot less lighter when I've got rid of about 20 kilos of chum. Um, we've got an anchor there. Uh, in case we want to anchor up later on when we've had enough of shark drifting with no luck. But we're going to give it a good go. We've got a shark bucket down here where some chum's going to go in. Live bait tank set up. All the gear's in there. The rods are in here. Engine's on board. Got our safety kit. Got our species ticket just in case we get one. The idea of the game is head out three or four miles, get some fresh bait, and then we're going to begin our drift when we get about a knot of tide and we're going to go towards Seaford heading over Beachy Head. There are freshers out there, they have been caught this year. Not many people put in the effort, so you never really know. We've got to give it a go to, uh, to catch one. Right, let's get this thing launched and uh, try and get some fish. I will be putting my life jacket on in a minute. I'm just uh, clearing some lines for some anglers. Holy crap, 300 chuffy baby. Tough as anything. First things first, put the life jacket on. Oh, the reason I don't put this life jacket on to begin with is quite simple. This one's an auto. So if I'm a silly billy and I fall in, my life jacket's gonna go off. And that is gonna uh, somewhat ruin the day. So I put it on as soon as, as early as convenient as possible. And that's gonna be now. And it's all caught down there. So I'll see you in a minute and uh, we'll get back to you shortly. For the guys which have been watching the channel uh, frequently over the last sort of year, will know fresher shark is something I've really wanted to target. The issue is this year I've committed myself to a species hunt. So uh, putting the hours in for one species isn't really viable, unfortunately. But today, we're gonna give it a go. Beautiful flat calm day, it should be like this all day long. Right, fresh bait, and we're in. Hang on, a couple of jigs, there we go, we're in. It's exactly what we wanted. We've come to a mark I know, which is produces mackerel quite a lot of the time. Fresh bait for shark fishing, absolutely essential. So, uh, yeah, it's a nice size bait, look at that. Good for chum as well. So we want about 20 of these, and uh, so I'll, I'll chum some up on the boat as well, fresh later. Absolutely ideal. Get me that chum bucket for a minute. Yes. Right, my dad's into some fish, I'm into some fish. Keep going, that's it. We've got loads there. Look, my rod's going. <laughs> that's it. Right, bring him in, bring him in. That's a lovely one. That is huge. That is a beautiful eating size mackerel, to be honest. Mm. Right, we're into more mackerel. This is going to plan so far. Right, you're not going to see me catching any more mackerel because that's boring for you guys. But we're going to catch a few more. Then we're going to steam out a couple more miles, take a slow steam. And then we're gonna, uh, well, as soon as we've got about a knot of tide, uh, we'll get some chum out and we'll get some shark lines out. Right, so while we're, um, while we're just catching bait and we're just messing around for now, I'm gonna run you through the gear we're gonna use for these fresher sharks. So the outfit we've got is an 80 pound class uh, full roller rod. This is just a flayed in gold. It's nothing expensive. I've caught big common skate on these. I know they're strong. I know they're reliable. There's no need for anything else. Uh, We've got a big, big, old school uh, Akuma, big, big game reel. So yeah, big outfit. And then the business ends is going to be a bit controversial, I'm afraid. Um, some people will use a mono rubbing trace. I've seen photos of these freshers. Um, I know they go up to sort of six, eight hundred pound. They will get through 200, 200 pound, even 400 pound mono pretty pretty easily to be honest so um, unfortunately um, what I have opted for today is a wire rubbing trace now it's not a massively long one it's just enough just to give me that confidence that even if it wraps up once or it wraps up twice it's not going to snap me off and it's not going to leave the hook in its mouth unfortunately you, you've got two things with this if you use a mono leader the more the likelihood is not a likelihood but you've got a slightly more chance of losing the fish then that it's the hook's going to be left in its mouth the weight's going to be dragging the weight around which isn't nice for the fish if you're using wire you're more likely to get it in and you'll be able to unhook the fish safely so 
it swings and roundabouts. I'm not saying this is the right thing to do, I'm saying this is what I'm doing today and it is what it is. Um, everyone will have their opinions on it. I know a lot of people who do the shark fishing on the, uh, the YouTube and they do it properly. Um, they, they advise and they do use these, so this is what I'm using. So we've got around about uh, seven foot of a wire leader. We've got a inline yellow weight there, that's just to add a little bit of attraction in the water. That gets Flemish looped and crimped onto another big, big game swivel, and then we've got the bite trace, and that is around about three foot. On there, we've got a big circle hook, which I'm gonna crush the barb down. In fact, I've already crushed the barb down on this one. Don't have any barbs, um, just purely based on the fact uh, it's much easier to unhook a big shark with no barbs. So we've got a big, don't quite know the size of this one. I think it's possibly about a 14, 16 0. Big, big hook. And then to use to float it, we're going to suspend it with balloons and I'm going to have a little boom just running up and down. So that's the gear we're using today. I don't particularly expect to get a shark run. Um, probably more likelihood we'll catch taupe, but that'll be fun either way. But we've got to be in it to win it. So um, we've got loads of chum, we've got loads of fresh bait now. And as soon as we get a little bit of tide, we've only got. 0 0.50 miles an hour tide at the moment. We need about a knot, really. Um, I'm going to punch out a little bit further, probably about two more miles that way. Take a slow steam, get the chum set in, and we're going to drift towards Seaford. That's the plan, and uh, <laughs> let's hope it works. Right, boys and girls, we just uh, I've just prepared the shark rods so the uh, balloons are all ready to go. What colour is our lucky balloon? I'm gonna have a red balloon, I think. Nigel, what colour would you like? Let I think pink. Yeah, go on, it sounds the, out better. You know, a nice, nice lady balloon. Pink to make the boys wink. I've set the drift up, so we're gonna run down a channel, deep, deep channel. Uh, there's three or four wrecks on the way, which we might hit, we might not, but... Um, yeah, we're going to drift the whole tide today, three o'clock that way, we're going to drift the whole tide back. So theoretically, by sort of seven o'clock this evening, uh, it's 10 o'clock now, we should be pretty much back where we started, so we'll be using no fuel. We're going to have two shark rods out, we're going to have one um, garfish rod out, so hopefully get a garfish for the species hunt, and then we're going to have two other rods, either on feathers or on the bottom, just with a uh, locked-in weight, and we're just going to see what's down there. We're in 100 foot of water, so um, yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. So, I'm going to do a little bit of a demo on how to um, set these shark floats out. Don't need balloons too big. You don't want too much tension on the fish. So you want just about enough. They're going to keep the bait up, keep it all suspended, uh, and you're going to be able to see it. Like that's perfect. So you don't want it. If it's too big, the shark might grab the bait and it might think, why is it not? You know, you just want just about enough to keep the bait afloat. You know, not for the weight to drag it under but so the fish will take it without hesitating. And then all we're gonna do on that little running boom is we're gonna unclip, unclip it on there, and then we're gonna pop it just through there. Really easy. And if you've got a shark on, you'll be, it'll run down to your, your leader and you can either just snap it off or keep it on and then you're gonna have to hand wind the fish in at the last minute because uh, you can't run the trace through. There you go, so that's on there. And that's just going to run up and hit our float stop. Then we're going to put our trace on, we're going to flap her up a fresh mackerel, get some chum down there, and jobs are good. Em. Right, so how to flap her up a mackerel, I've shown this in enough videos, but we're going to chop off, chop it off like that, we'll keep that for free offerings. I'm going to run the knife up one side of the backbone, like so. Look at that, nice white new rail blazer bait board, getting all bloody, that's what it's for. Run it up the other side. Run the knife down just a tiny bit, take the backbone out. And that is it. And then we put the circle hook through there. So we've got our circle hook. I'm just gonna put it, just gonna put it through there, just like that. And we're just gonna hook it up like so. So in the water, that flap around, hopefully we'll, we'll get some fish. We might get taupe today. We might get a fresh shark. We'll give it a go. Right, mackerel in. We'll feed it out slowly. There's the weight going in. And then we'll just run it out, like so. And that will hit, that one's, that one's the uh, shallow rod. There you go, so that's hit. That's hit where we want it. 
Now I'm going to keep on letting some line out because I want it to be away from the boat. So we'll keep on letting some line out and the tide should take it away nicely. Right, so we're just setting the chum up. I've made this little box. So it's got a little float around it, a little bit of lagging. That floats, got a lid to it. And now I'm just emptying all my, this bait is the most grimmest bait. I've never wanted to touch, not touch paint before in my life. It's about three days old, some of this stuff. And I just put a load of guts, a load of, this isn't, this isn't frozen. This is just bran, oil. Oh my God, it, oh my God, it reeks. It's got horrible prawns. I'm gonna put a load in there to get it going. And then I've got a couple of frozen blocks, which will obviously last a bit longer. I'm not putting the plastic in the ocean. I'm just, woo. Get a load of, get a load of water over there. Just soak it all in. You'll see all the bits and see all the brand floating out. A load of, there'll be a load of slick, all of slick oil. That will attract the sharks in. Might take a couple of hours to get this going, but yeah, there's a nice bit of oil content in the water and it will go, we'll follow all the way. Once the tide starts going, our baits will run just in line. Yeah, that's the, that's the plan. We're now sharking. The chum bucket's down there. We've got lovely oily slick going off. Yeah, the tide hasn't quite moved properly yet. And, but when we start kicking along, we'll start kicking that way a bit and it'll be a, be a bit, bit better. Get a nice chum slick going. Um, we've got the garfish rod out in the middle, which is this taller one. That's oof, eight foot under the surface. The garfish will come and nab at all the little bits of chum. We're a bit, probably a bit deep for the gars, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't think they really live in 100 foot of water, but you never know, worth a punt. And then we've got this rod here, which is a little bit shallower and it's nice and near in. That's a shark rod. So we've got shark rod there, deep one, shallow rod, chum, garfish rod. And then we've got two other rods. I'm going to uh, put a little bit of strip of mackerel on mine, have it on the bottom with an inline weight and uh, see what I can pick up there. Every so often when you're sharking, that's me bucket, give it a little, Give it a little movement just to let let more bits out as you can see just by doing that has let out has let out more bits of bran so yeah just keep keep doing that obviously any bits of mackerel throw the guts in give them a few bits of free offerings um it's just a waiting game this shark fishing likely it is we won't get one but it's nice to be out it's nice to be trying but we've got to, got to stick it out i have got to put the hours in for these fresher sharks there's not that many around um but getting one is it would be absolutely epic so we've just got to give it a go right so just um we're just speaking to my dad basically we're just seeing what line we're on we're going to come into line with a few wrecks and he said oh why don't we just drive there and i went well you'd lose you'd lose your chum slick doing that and he went he went, oh, okay, whatever. So I tried to explain it like this. Basically, your chum slick is, a, is basically a road. Imagine it as a road. So your chum slick's here, at your, your chum box, and it's sleeking, it's sleeking this way. It's all around here. Sharks, Mr. Shark's coming along. Obviously, this is the chum. This is the chum line here. I'll just imagine these things. Pressure shark's coming along, and it swims through that line. They're gonna be curious. Now, if they chuck a left, they're going away from our boat, but they'll lose the scent. And so they'll turn around and they'll follow the scent up until the chum box. And where your chum box is, is obviously where your bait is. So if we drive away, we break that road. We have to pull in everything. We break that road and we start somewhere else. So we start over here and that road ends here. That fresh shark follows the road. The, oh, the road's come to an end. That fish is lost. That fish isn't gonna to come to your base. So you have to stay in one place and you have to drift. As, as tempting as it might be to move 200, 300 yards away um, to, to a wreck and try that, you have to, when you're shark fishing, Nigel, I think you had a bite there. Did I? Yeah. When you're shark fishing, you have to just drift and don't move because otherwise you break that line. I hope that's a good explanation as to how chum works on a drift. Today's video might not be action packed, but hopefully you'll, um, you'll pick up some tips and you'll learn a few bits uh, as, as you're watching. So um, it, it's gonna be worth a watch regardless of what fish we catch today, just purely based on the fact that you will pick up some tips, hopefully. Guys, we've got a run, we've got a shark run. We've got a shark run. I'm gonna let it take it. We've got a shark run, it's on. Just winding up all the other rods. Comes out of nowhere, you see. This could be this could be exciting. Might just be a tote, but probably is a tote. I'm gonna engage the gear. I can feel him. 
I'm going to keep moving that chum bag as well just to keep that chum going I said I said we want to because we're near a wreck could be a poor beagle could be anything I think he might have gone I think he might have gone Hang on. I'm going to keep winding in no we're in we're in we're on fish on fish on fish on not a big fish I don't think but we've got a fish on right we're on the trace now what we've got here a tote Hey, there we go the bycatch of a tote was exactly what I said might happen oh, sadly not our fresher but there we go we've got a bycatch of a tote not a bad fish now I'm just gonna because it's circle hook it's perfectly hooked absolutely nailed so it's nice and easy to unhook right we've got a bycatch of a tote lovely tote that's probably 15 20 pounds something like that probably about 15 um we're gonna get get our shark rod straight back out there excellent see you later baby Woohoo! well done sir get in lovely right it's been a few hours the charm i can see is still in there got a lot of brown but we're just going to update it with another one keep that oil content going in it's evidently working so there you go get rid of our pot like that so I say it's just a it's just a box i've attached a lid with some rope a couple of carabiners for the lid float cable tied around it and then we'll give it a nice shake just get all those bits out just coming over that wreck that i'd set myself to drift over oh i think I'm, i've had a little knock there i've got mackerel bait you can see it on the finder i've just scrolled back um that's the wreck and we'll get a lot of mackerel off of it obviously we're shark fishing so we'll we'll go past this in a minute and uh, and that'll be us but um yeah it's a big old wreck oh my goodness i might come and anchor this one day 100 foot wreck can't go wrong with that sort it out now jill mackerel bashing everywhere <laughs> oh, the blues just popped boys and we've got another run we've got another run blues just popped this is a better fish ready yeah yeah let me get some oh it's come off it's just come off i'm gonna keep whining just in case he's in we we heard a fish come up to the top didn't we we, did. we, we saw a fresh the fresh, it was a fresher jumping out and uh yeah he's done me in he's done me in damn it oh damn it right, I'll be there. look I'll at be that there. absolutely took took the top off right we're gonna go straight back out again <sighs> wow it's been one of them days so far um just keep losing fish on my garfish rod I just had 20 pound um, mono, it's over there now. Uh, float went under, ding, ding, ding. I felt it, hammer down, cut me off instantly. It was either a tope, yeah, because that could quite easily cut through um, the 20 pound mono, or it could have been a fresh shark on a, who took a tiny little bit of mackerel. Um, so I'm going to put a proper rig 200 pound mono rig on the little float rod um just to give it a go but the tide will be turning soon and then we'll be going back the other way um so we've still we've still got time but the problem is we've kind of run out of chum so what i'm doing now is just making up some chum with the mackerel we're just chopping it up slicing it squeezing it and putting it in the uh in the chum bucket it'll give some sort of scent but uh it won't it won't be sort of an oily scent as much as it would have been um at the beginning so fortunately i feel like our time possibly has not come to an end but the best time and our best opportunity may have disappeared but we're going to keep carrying on because there are fish here <laughs> another run you can see the lot here look, look 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 it's going it's going i'm just going to give it a little while just to see what it does thing is i think they're napping at the end uh, they're taking the whole mackerel but not the head Yep, we're into something, I think. Nothing big. Might be a small tote. Is it going to be a tote? Or is it going to be... Oh, hello. He's going around the transducer. Ah, oh, I think he's just come up. Bugger. Yeah, no, he's still on. Whatever he is. Yep, tote. Oh. 
far after, but that would explain what bit us off on the smaller rod earlier. There you go. Should have used a T-bar at the beginning. There we have it. Tope number two, which would explain what's been bit, which bit us off on the uh, on the small rod. So uh, for a bit of sport, hopefully we'll get one on the lure rod. But there we go. Tope number two, wicked. Let's get him back. Woo! There we go. Oh, come on, Hank. This is taking a whole flapper. Oh, look, look, look. He's chasing it. He's chasing it. Look. You see him? Yeah. Has he got it? Yes, he's got it. There we go. We're in. Now we're in. Now we're in. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. So it took it originally. And uh, what happened last time? This is what happened last time, yeah. Um, he took it originally. A white, he come off. And then he's followed it up. And it, it'll be on camera, hopefully. Let's get that fish in, Jake. Okay. Oh, oh, there he is. Not bad one. Oh, God, Nigel, Nigel. Keep that away from me. Oh, God. Don't want to break another tip. No. <laughs> oh, exactly the same situation as last time, how I broke my tip, and I'm doing it again. I do not learn. Okay, no problem. So we've got tote number three, which was taken, <laughs> which literally took it right by the boat. There you go, caught on a lure rod. Right, this is a much better fish, guys. All happened at once, didn't it? It did. We've had, we've literally, I mean, sorted out the other one. This is a better fish. This is going to be a PB tote, I reckon. To put a bend in this rod, going to be something big. Oh. Definitely won't be a fresher unless it's an absolute baby. Um, but we'll see. Right, we're at the leader. At the leader. Oh, has he come off? No, he's still there. Right. This is our biggest tote, I think, this year. Let's have a little look in a minute. It all went off at once. We just had, we've literally just finished a tote literally just put one back and off this one absolutely raced there you go it's straight out with a t-bar and circle hook with barbless that's the best fish right there we go tope number four nice fish that is Look at that big mouth you'll be able to see a bit of blood it'll be absolutely fine beautiful fish absolutely stunning look at the eyes on them bloody lovely blue eyes it's not what we're after, but when you're catching fish like this, it really doesn't matter. Let's try and get him back. Off it goes. Get him. Right, oh, I'm just winding up. The balloon's gone, and I just thought, oh, I need a new balloon. And uh, I don't know, it feels a bit heavier. I think it might be the small tote, possibly. I don't know, it might not be. It might not be, but... It doesn't... Yeah, there is a fish on here. There is a fish on here. That's the... The sad reality is when you lose. Ah, oh, just come off, I think. No, it hasn't. All right, there he is. Yeah, the sad reality when using big, heavy rods like this is there's no sporting fun at all. But that is tope number five. There you go. Tope. Tote number five, didn't even realise it was on because until the balloon, it took the balloon and I didn't see the balloon and uh, there it is. Only a small one, about five, six pounds. Yeah. Look at this gorgeous um, Armada type ship. I'll zoom in now um, and you should be able to see it. It's absolutely stunning. It must be 1800s, I, I would imagine, um, or it might be a modern replica, but. God, look at that, it's absolutely stunning. That must take quite a lot of crew on board there, I would imagine. I don't know if they've got small inboard motors added later on, but to me, actually, that doesn't look that old. It looks more, yeah, more like a modern replica, but still, absolutely stunning ship. Right, well, what an epic day it's been. We've had six tote, we've had scads, we've had mackerel uh, pouting. Unfortunately, not a fresher shark. We think we lost one, so it is what it is, but we'll be back this year, hopefully for another day or two on the sharks. The engine's just warming up, 
started on the third pool. It's been sitting there all day, so there's no surprise there. Thank you for joining us today. There's going to be a lot more videos to come on this boat, I'm hoping. Uh, definitely over the next few days. But what stunning scenery we've been treated to. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the tote. Sorry there was no fresh shark. Um, we'd say we did think we lost one. Definitely be doing that more this year. That's a campaign I need to sort of put a few more hours into here and there. It's just difficult when you're um, tied up with species hunting. But next year is definitely a year. <laughs> I am I'm targeting them big time. Um, every trip pretty much will be that solely solely blaze from June to September. I will just be fresher shark fishing. If I get one this year, I won't be. <laughs> I'll be doing something else. Anyway. Hope you have a lovely week and take care. Thank you for joining us. This is the Pollocraft 300 Tuffy we've been on today. Wicked, wicked boat. Cheers.